Hi there, I'm Peter Sachs, and welcome to The Joy of Jazz, Lesson 1. Playing jazz is truly one of the great joys in my life, and what I hope to do today is to give you your first tools to get you improvising jazz. What is jazz improvisation? If you're like most people, you probably have some ideas about jazz being a complex and difficult thing. A common notion about jazz improvisation is that it's about making stuff up, somehow magically and spontaneously pulling notes out of thin air. Well, I'm here to tell you that nothing could be further from the truth. For me, a definition of jazz improvisation that works goes something like this. Jazz improvisation is about choosing musical ideas that you already know how to play really, really well and combining them in new ways to tell your story, to express what you're feeling and experiencing moment by moment by moment. So what are the musical ideas of jazz all about? I read a great quote of Dizzy Gillespie's the other day. Diz said, I hear rhythms mostly, and then I put notes to them. And I got really excited about that because I thought that's what I do. I hear and feel the rhythms first, and then the notes follow. I suspect the same is probably true of a lot of great jazz improvisers. It's all about the rhythm. Jazz is a language. And like any other language, it has a readily identifiable sound. If I play you probably think rock and roll, or maybe more specifically, uh, 50s rock. You know, Chuck Berry, Elvis, all that. On the other hand, if I play You probably identified that as something Latin American. Maybe if you've heard a lot of Brazilian music, you would have said, oh, bossa nova. And now if I play. That's jazz. The sound of jazz is characterized by specific rhythmic patterns and phrases. These rhythmic patterns and phrases comprise what I like to call the rhythmic vocabulary of jazz. But enough talk already. It's time to get you speaking the language of jazz. So let's learn our first chunk of rhythmic vocabulary. This one's called four eighth notes, or simply four eighths. And it goes like this. Shoo-ba-doo-bop. Mm. Shoo-ba-doo-bop. Mm. Sing it with me. Shoo-ba-doo-bop. Uh. Uh. Shoo-ba-doo-bop. Uh. Good. Your first chunk of rhythmic vocabulary. Shoo-ba-doo-bop. So as I'm singing, I'm snapping my fingers, and you may have noticed that my finger snaps fall on beats two and four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's the way we snap our fingers when we listen to jazz. If you were to put on a recording by Charlie Parker or Miles Davis or John Coltrane, any straight ahead swinging jazz, you would almost certainly start snapping your fingers on beats two and four. As we begin to learn rhythmic vocabulary, we need to play along with a steady beat. So I'm going to turn on my metronome here. I use a software-based metronome that uses the sound of a hi-hat symbol for the click. This is nice because in a jazz context, the drummer usually plays the hi-hat on beats two and four. So using a metronome with a hi-hat sound imparts a certain authenticity to the experience. But any metronome will work. Anyway, here's my metronome click. And once again, remember that represents beats two and four. 
One, two, one, two, three, four, one. So now we're going to sing Shubadoo Bop with the metronome. A one, two, three, and Shubadoo Bop, your turn. Shubadoo Bop, one more time. Shubadoo Bop, here you go. Shubadoo Bop, good. So now we're going to take Shubadoo Bop and transfer it to our instrument. And in order to do that, we have to know what notes to play. Well, there's a very simple, straightforward scale that's usable in a variety of musical situations, and it's called the blues scale. It uses the notes F, A flat, B flat, B, C, and E flat. The F blues scale. Since we're dealing with a four-note chunk of rhythmic vocabulary, shu ba du ba, we're just going to use the first four notes, F, A flat, B flat, and B. I'll play it first. A one, two, three. Uh, uh. Join me. Three, four, shu ba du ba. A one. Now we're going to take that same chunk of rhythmic vocabulary and the same first four notes of the blues scale, but play them descending. It'll sound like this. A one, two, three, four. A one, two, three, four. Play along. A two, here we go. And again, good. So now let's try alternating those two. We'll play the blues lick ascending and follow it by the same notes descending. It'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. Uh, you're with me. Here we go. And. Uh, uh. Yeah. All right. Swing in. So I'm going to give you two other possibilities, that is to say two other combinations of those same four notes. And once again, we're keeping the same rhythm. We're just changing the order of the notes. Uh, let's do this one. We'll play A flat, F, B natural, B flat. So it'll sound like this. Two, three, four. A one, two, and. Here we go. Three, four. A one, two, three, four. Good. So as you may have noticed, we had one lick that started on F, one that started on B, one that started on A flat, and a fourth one the logical choice would be to start on the note B flat, since that's the only note we haven't used yet. So we'll play this line. B flat, B natural, A flat, F. A one, two, three, four. A one, two, three, four. Play along. A one, two, here we go. Uh, a one, two, three, four. Good, you're swinging. So what I'd like to do to finish up this lesson is to add some chords in my left hand. Basically, I'll be playing an F blues progression, and I'm just going to use the uh, four licks that I've already given you and try and mix them up uh, to create something that vaguely resembles music, or so we hope. Here goes. A one, two, three, four. Uh. So there you have it, first chunk of rhythmic vocabulary, 
four eighths using the first four notes of the blues scale. The most important thing to remember is that it needs to feel like jazz. Well, what does that mean? That means never forget shoo-ba-doo-ba. That should be your mantra. Shoo-ba-doo-ba. Shoo-ba-doo-ba. If you change that, if you were to play something like da da shoot da or da 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 it would start to sound awkward and not swinging. It's like somebody that's just learned uh, the Spanish language and they go to Mexico and greet somebody and they proudly proclaim, yo hablo espanol. Well, clearly something is amiss. They've forgotten that you don't say the H in hablo. They've also forgotten the Enya in espanol. Um, needless to say, whoever they're talking to gets that they're missing something. Something essential to the language is not present. So what you want to do is make sure that you never forget shoo-ba-doo-bop, shoo-ba-doo-bop. That's the rhythmic core of your first bit of language. And as long as you play that authentically, shoo-ba-doo-bop, shoo-ba-doo-bop, it'll always sound like jazz. Well, I've had a lot of fun today. I hope this has been uh, enjoyable for you too. Uh, happy practicing, and I'll see you in lesson two.